Washington Huskies coming off a national championship as Jed Fish was officially announced as a head coach at UW on January 14th and since then there's been massive change in Seattle but Fish has been steadfast in his desire to accomplish things at Washington that have never been done and for more on the dawn of a new era in Montlake we bring in another friend of mine Chris Fetters from dogman.com Chris been a long time my friend how you doing Coop, fantastic, man. They need you up here, man. They they got they need recruiting. There's I got no background right here now. They're starting <laughs> from scratch. That's all right, man. Everybody is right now. So I, I want to ask you, Jed Fish has hit the ground running, not only with his coaching staff, the type of guys that he has brought in, uh, and Belichick and the defensive coordinator, uh, Sinceri as well in the defensive backfield, but big expectations on the recruiting trail. He came in and he said, hey, I want to have the best recruiting class in the history of the program. I kind of took that a little bit personal, but I like the idea for that of Jed Fish. What have been your early impressions of Jed Fish in Seattle? Yeah, it's one of those things where, you know, he told us flat out when he got to Washington, there were 49 scholarship players on that roster. Absolutely decimated once the national championship game was done. Kalen DeBoer going to Alabama. They lost their entire offensive line. Hell, they lost 20 of 22 starters from that national championship game. So Jet Fish knew exactly what he uh, needed to do when he came in. He hit the ground running. They're up to 79, 80 scholarship guys now. So they've put like 30 guys, uh, new guys into the roster, uh, a bunch of guys from Arizona where he came from, but also from other parts. And, you know, he flat out told us that if, if it wasn't for this portal right now, this particular window, he'd be very, very concerned about a couple of position groups. So they've addressed it really hard. They've really leaned into their NFL prowess, you know, getting Steve Belichick getting Brennan Carroll to come from Arizona with him. So they're, they've done all they can in terms of creating the momentum, creating kind of some forward motion here uh, as they go through their spring. But it's going to be really interesting, guys, because, you know, not only is the portal starting and they're going to go grab a bunch of different guys, but there's also a number of guys here at Washington that are going to ha have to start making decisions on what their future are going to be like. And we're only halfway through spring football. So I guarantee you there's going to be a lot of interesting conversations going on in Montlake right now in terms of futures for the, some of the guys that are currently on the roster. It's incredibly difficult to imagine how you replace Michael Penix Jr. in the year that he had with Kalen DeBoer in that magical run to the national championship. Enter Will Rogers from Mississippi State, but Chris, I believe there's another name that has entered the conversation as well as 2024 signee Damon Williams, originally signed with Arizona, transferred over to Washington with Jed Fish. He's starting to make some noise there too. What can you tell us about the Huskies quarterback situation? Yeah, it's an interesting one, Coop, because you know, you've got Will Rogers who comes in with three years starting experience in Mississippi State. You know, he has all those starts under his belt, second leading passer in terms of yards in SEC history. He's the clear number one, right? Well, Damon Williams comes in as a true freshman, very heralded kid. And, you know, Jed Fish, I mean, they they had to have Damon Williams. This was a huge recruit for them going to Arizona. He, they were able to get his, uh, get his letter of intent null and voided so that he could come to Washington. And he's been nothing short of a, rele a revelation so far this spring. Um, you know, he very, he's very reminiscent of the last two quarterbacks that Arizona had under Fish in Jaden Delora and Noah Fafita. So you've got those two guys as kind of benchmarks and blueprints for a guy like Damon Williams, who to me, honestly, being a Seattle guy, he, he has a little bit of Russell Wilson vibes about him too. Not the biggest kid in the world. But he really does a great job out of the pocket. He does a really good job when things break down. And although we haven't seen his full arsenal yet, he's got a tremendous arm. And the future is really, really bright for him, as well as uh, Marmar Davis, Demarcius Davis, the other true freshman. But really, when you look at Washington's quarterback's rooms, guys, it's Will Rogers with his 30-plus starts at Mississippi State. And then you've got two true freshmen who have never even played a snap of NFL or NCAA football. 
Chris, how do the dogs replace the receiver production? When you think about Roma Dunze, you think about guys like Jalen Millen, Jalen Polk, and not to mention Jeremy Bernard was a pretty good uh, player as well. He's off to Alabama. I'm looking at 90-plus starts here that Jed Fish has to replace with his receiving core. What does that look like for either Will Rogers or Damon Williams, and who's he going to be throwing the ball to? Well, there's one guy that returned in Denzel Boston who I think has really become kind of the receiver one in that room right now. Um, if there is a guy that could be a Roma Dunze type clone moving forward for Washington, it is Denzel Boston. He's done a really, really phenomenal job getting bigger, faster, stronger in the offseason. And I think he's really shown himself to be the most consistent performer so far. Uh, California uh, transfer Jeremiah Hunter is another guy certainly to look at. And he is a player that, you know, it may have taken a week or two for him to kind of acclimate, get, you know, ready, get in the flow in terms of, you know, what it's like to not just be a player at Washington, but, you know, going to school and all that kind of stuff. But these last couple of practices, he's really shown up and he's shown to be that guy. He had a really big game for Cal at Washington last season. So he should, Washington fans already kind of know he showed glimpses of what he could be. And so I think Jeremiah Hunter is a guy you got definitely got to watch out for. And then there's the senior Giles Jackson, the Michigan former Michigan transfer, who, you know, he kind of he was a little banged up last year. So he made the decision along with last year's staff to go ahead and redshirt. And so he's been really looking forward to this. And he's going to be one of those guys that's going to offer a veteran presence and a voice to that very, very young receivers room because there's a lot of young talent in that room. You've got Rasheed Williams, you've got Keith Reynolds from last year's team, but then you've also got new kids, true freshmen in Audrick Harris. You got Jason Robinson coming in. Those guys have, have shown glimpses, but obviously very inconsistent so far halfway through spring. But there's a lot of talent on this roster, Coop. It's just a matter for things to come together. But I think Denzel Boston right now, I think Jeremiah Hunter, I think Giles Jackson, those are probably going to be the top three guys uh, that you're looking for right now. Well, you mentioned it's not just offense. There's a lot of other uh, positions and a lot of production that they have to replace, especially on the defensive side of the ball as well. What other position groups are you expecting Jed Fish to be quite aggressive with over the next couple of weeks? It begins and ends with the offensive line. No question about it. They lost every single offensive lineman from that Joe Moore award-winning team last year. Uh, both the tackles in terms of Troy Fautanu and Roger Rosengarten are going pro. And then the three interior guys all went to SEC teams. You've got center Parker Brailsford, who went to Alabama, followed Kalen DeBoer to Alabama. And then you had the two guards. You had Nate Kalepo and you had Julius Bulo. They both went to Ole Miss. So literally starting from scratch for Brennan Carroll, trying to find offensive linemen. And then on top of it, the two most experienced returning offensive linemen available in land and hatchet and guard memoir are both banged up and they're both rehabbing so they're not even available you look at drew as a party the tackle that came in from san diego state and i think he played in maybe six games last season for the aztecs outside of him every single scholarship offensive lineman right now is either a true freshman or a redshirt freshman so they are going to hit the portal as hard as humanly possible uh, Chris has already put in a crystal ball for SMU offensive tackle Marcus Bryant, who visit recently visited Washington. He's a six eight, absolute load. I think ideally, I'm now I'm not in the war room, but I think ideally what they want is they want to put in a guy like Marcus Bryant at left tackle, and then they want to put keep as a party at right tackle where he played at SDSU, and those would kind of be your bookend tackles to start. But they've got they've got so many holes to fill. Wouldn't shock me at all if they went for at least four or maybe even five offensive linemen in this portal. Chris, a lot of new names Chris. here with this Washington roster. Give us one that we can expect to maybe keep an eye on in the fall that maybe we're not talking about a lot right now. It's interesting, too, Coop, because the running back group really looked loaded, especially when Jonah Coleman from Arizona followed Jed Fish to Seattle. Um you know, you had Cameron Davis coming back from an injury, and he was one of the leading rushers two years ago. And so it just looked like it was going to be loaded. You've got, you had Daniel Angata coming back, the Arizona State transfer. You had Tybo Rogers coming back, who was productive as a true freshman last year. But now Will Nixon, who was a factor last year, in Nebraska transfer, he's gone. 
Tyvo Rogers is not available anymore. And both Cameron Davis and Sam Adams have both been very, very limited in practice. So the guy who's really stepped up, on, uh, honestly, is this true freshman Arizona signee who then switched to Washington in Adam Muhammad. Adam Muhammad is about six, six foot, 200 pound running back out of Glendale, Arizona, originally signed with Arizona, but then switched, signed with Washington. And he has come in and he has really embraced his role. He's been a top three running back for spring for Scotty Graham in terms of they've used Jonah Coleman, they've used Daniel Ngata, and then Adam Muhammad, the true freshman. And he's shown some good things, even in things like pass protection that you would never expect a true freshman to really look solid at right out of the gate. He's looked very competent, and he's a great pass catcher. And he's even embraced special teams, which for a true freshman, sometimes it takes a minute for those guys to 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 really see the value in special teams. But he's embraced the whole thing. The coaches have been raving about him, and he just looks the part. I don't know if his future is this fall, guys. But I really do think that Adam Muhammad is going to be a guy, especially under our radar. We weren't expecting much from him at all uh, this spring, but he's really surprised. Chris Fetters, good to see you, brother. As always, we'll talk soon. Chris Fetters, dogman.com, a lot of information, especially when it comes to that Washington roster, a lot of turnover as well. And let's get into the roster breakdown a little bit. Chris was talking about that running back room, and maybe that can be a positional strength uh, for the Huskies. Carl, I know that's a room that you like a lot as well, as Jonah Coleman, Muhammad, two names that have emerged in the spring. Jonah Coleman coming back. Muhammad has had a very impressive spring so far as a freshman. Those are the posi that's the position right now that Washington is going to have to lean on early, especially as they retool their offensive line. One of the things I say all the time, everybody thinks I'm crazy when I say it, is the running back makes the offensive line. The offensive line does not make the running back. So if you can lean on these two guys early on in the season, while you get that offensive line to start to gel and build some continuity, you can have some offensive production here for Washington. True, I think you like the secondary here. They got some pieces, right? Everywhere you look on the roster, it seems like it's been decimated, but you get Elijah Jackson back, you feel good about that. You bring over Ephesians Prize Sock from Arizona, was one of the most coveted corners in the portal. He joins Jed Fish as well. You got Jordan Shaw too. So Washington, as uh, obliterated as that roster uh, has been over the last couple months, Jed Fish and his staff moving really, really quick. Yeah, the secondary, they have brought a lot of guys in, and I think they're going to continue to try to do that. They're looking for difference makers across the board, but they like the secondary so far. Cooper, I think the key number here is 3%. That is the returning offensive production for the Huskies. That is an FBS worst. Now, they lost Michael Penix, Roman Dunze, all those other wide receivers. But this is a, a group, a roster that is very, very green. Um, and when you look at the 2D, the one that where my eyes instantly went is that secondary. Um, but they're going to be as active as anyone in the transfer portal here in this window. Smoke, what do you like about Will Rogers and what he gives Jed Fish and a proven, experienced quarterback? And the funny thing about him, he transferred before Jed Fish was there. Uh, and once Jed Fish came aboard, decided to stay now finds himself in a battle with a freshman quarterback, but certainly you got to think he's got the upper hand with all the experience. Well, we listen, we just listen to Drew. He said green, offensive line, lack, 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 lack. If you lack everything, what you need is veteran proven experience from a guy that's played in the SEC, has been through the war and has had production. If you don't have a really good offensive line, you need a guy to get the ball out of their hands. Will Rogers gets a hand out, the ball out of his hands as quickly as any quarterback in that last cycle that transferred in. So if you're not good up front, get the ball out of your hand and get it to your running backs. And those young receivers will come along along the way. But if you're green, quarterback's the way to go. And I think this is the strength of the offense right now as we look at it. Because everything else, you throw it up in the air, you're not hitting anything. Chris Hummer, who's been on the show with us uh, throughout the entire day before we jumped on, he said, hey, Washington is pretty aggressive in the portal, especially financially in their NIL collective. I found that pretty fascinating. If you would have told me that we're living in a world that that's who Washington was, especially when I worked for Chris Peterson, oh, how the times have changed. Drew, I kind of want to get your opinion from the recruiting standpoint. Jed Fish, uh, just because he was kind of last one in uh, in terms of the coaching cycle, it felt like he's kind of just been glossed over, not to mention Arizona won 10 plus games last year. This is a team uh, that he has completely rebuilt uh, coming off a one win season. Um, Tell me what you think about Washington, Jed Fish, and what they can be in the Big Ten and what you've seen so far from the recruiting standpoint. 
Well, I think they have their work cut out for him, right? We just brought up the 3% number, but I was talking with someone there in Seattle. And they went out to Pro Day, looked like a lot of good NFL guys. Then they went to their workout, and the roster isn't where they want it to be right now. Kalen DeBoer obviously won a ton of games there at Washington, but I think the back end of that roster, what they had built through the high school ranks, isn't the standard that needs to be there if you want to consistently be in the college football playoff conversation. I remember Washington moving to the Big Ten, so I think it's going to take time, but I think Jed Fish has the right staff in place. We saw what those guys did at Arizona. Cooper, when he was announced as the new man there, I think me and you both kind of were like, whoa, what are the, what's the game plan here? You look up, you said it, Noah Fatita, uh, T-Mac, the wide receiver. I know we're going to talk about Arizona later on in the show, but they found ways to get difference makers, and they did it through the high school ranks, and they did it through the transfer portal as well. And it sounds like that's kind of the same formula here. And I think Washington's in a position where they're not – or oh, we got to get this position, we got to get this. They're just going to take best available right now and try to get some depth and infuse that with what they already have on the roster. It's a lot of good, a lot to be excited about, but in the short term, you better roll up your sleeves if you're Jed Fish and that staff. They got a lot of work to do. Carl, that receiver room, pretty dynamic. I mean, you think about it, Dunze, Jalen Polk, Jalen McMillan, I think all those guys, uh, you know, day one, day two, maybe day two, possibly day three for Jalen McMillan. That being said, that's a, that's a lot of production, not to mention Jeremy Bernard as well. That's going to be something that I think is going to take a little bit of time. Not just production, star power, leadership, swagger, toughness, chemistry. You lost all of those guys out of a big time room that led you to the national championship game. Got to have some guys step up at the receiver position. Still have to address some receiver needs in the transfer portal. I expect them to be all over the best available receivers in the transfer portal. That's just a ton of talent to lose. Drew, a lot of depth, right? We talked about that uh, as well. And when we're going through the rundown, it wasn't one position group. You're just like, hey, man, these guys got to build it from the floor up. What does that look like, that challenge over the next couple of years? I think it's finding guys with multi years of eligibility, right? You want to compare this to, uh, you know, the NFL. You're not trying to sign these guys on one year deals. You're looking for the two, three, you know, maybe a fourth year player option if it's available. We've seen them, you know, go after the kids they had at Arizona and for good reason. You mentioned it, DeMond Williams, the quarterback. That was a the guy they were fired up. Uh, and then they talk him into following them to Washington. He has a huge spring game. There's all these articles out there saying we're not ranking him high enough. We'll see on DeMond Williams. Uh, but I think it's just identifying guys that are going to meet your height, weight, speed requirements and allow you to be competitive in the Big Ten. I think that's the other thing. They are going to a new conference. The other thing, Cooper, Washington needs to, to strike while the iron's hot. Michael Penix was one of the most prolific players in all of college football last season. You said it. They're going to have all these guys drafted. Kids realize I can go to Washington and make the league. I can be on the biggest stage. Jetfish has an opportunity to capitalize here over the next season, really. Smoke the offensive line. I mean, you think about same thing we talked about with the receiver room, but Troy Fatani, a left tackle, was a guy that was a huge part of their offensive line. You lose Julius Bulo, you lose Nate Kalepo, uh, both guys off to Oxford, Mississippi, going to play for Lane Kiffin, and then Roger Rosengarten off to the NFL draft. And, well, not to mention Parker Brailsford, right? We talked so much about Michigan in that offensive line. How about these guys? They won the Joe Moore Award last year. That was the best offensive line unit in the entire country. So uh, when you talk about replacing an entire unit and you talk about keeping your quarterback upright and a guy in Will Rogers and how important that is for him, uh, certainly a unique challenge here for Jed Fish and his staff. Yeah, we all understand that Jed Fish was a really sneaky good hire. Just being a stabilizer of a program when you leave a coach that goes to Alabama. And when you leave, when a, when a new coach comes in and an old coach goes away, the position that hits the hardest is the offensive line. Because we know how hard it is to A, develop them and how to get really good offensive linemen in your program. So that position gets hit hardest. So now what Coach Jed has to do now is do the same thing that you did in Arizona. It's patchwork your way through this process and develop your offensive line down the line. And you just got to play quicker, unconventional, and get your best pl playmakers the ball in their hands and just try to get to six wins against the ball and play in, cut in, a, in a solid bowl to get an administration off your back and get the fans start coming back out and help yourself out in recruiting. Drew, we got a little bit of time here, so I'm going to set you up. Uh, Damon Williams, right? Uh, certainly a guy that has already made some noise in Seattle. We mentioned it. Five foot nine quarterback from Basha in Arizona. Uh, a guy that uh, you would call a point guard, right? Has a Bryce Young uh, type of feel, play style to him in the pocket. He's able to extend plays. He's a really heady player. We got to see him at the All-American Bowl. 
no surprises uh, that he's turning some heads early. Tell us what you like about him and what you could expect to potentially see from a guy like him this season. Well, uh, Will Rogers is going to be the quarterback, but why can't DeMond Williams have uh, some packages? And, you know, he's an athletic guy that can beat you with his feet, but I thought his arm was one of the more underrated uh, arms in the 2024 cycle. We saw him at the Elite 11 Finals. You turn on the game tape, he can throw it 70 yards in the air. For a guy that is 5'9", that is pretty impressive. It kind of reminds me like of a Kyler Murray back there running around. Uh, and I think the other thing that's notable, Cooper, he's one of the only quarterbacks that took Dylan Riola down multiple times in high school two different times he built uh, beat Dylan Riola look if he was five you know if, if he was six two he would have been in the top two four seven right we are projecting towards Sunday's recent data shows five nine quarterbacks with smaller hands you know it's gonna be a bit difficult for those guys to get selected in the NFL draft but I fully expect him to make some make and create some magic uh, on Saturdays He's definitely an impressive quarterback. He's one of the kids I got a chance to see live against Rayola in high school because my nephew was the tailback at Basher High School, the Deshaun Buchanan. And so this quarterback, like Drew just said, if he was a bigger guy, he would have been on everybody's radar. He's one of those guys that I really expect to do some special things in his career. He's a ball player. Washington certainly going to be a team to watch under Jed Fish, and we appreciate Chris Fetters coming on. And make sure, if you want all your Washington Husky information, to visit dogman.com for the latest news on the Huskies in football. 